right now. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Lenny Della Rocca and Michael McAnomira with South Florida Poetry Journal here at the Miami Book Fair with Mr. Charles Simikin. Mr. Simic, thank you for coming. My well, pleasure. Um, I had your book, and I sent it off to be reviewed, and so now I don't have your book. So, um, I have a book. <laughs> do you? Okay, because if you don't mind, I was going to start off with asking you to see if you would read a poem or so, sure. uh, just to get our feet wet into this interview. Yeah, okay. and then we'll go from there. There we are. And the book is scribbled in the dark. Scribbled in the dark. So did you actually scribble in the dark when you wrote this? <laughs> I, I always scribble in the dark right. uh, for the simple reason that um, I'm an insomniac and uh, uh -huh. if I turn the lights on and, and you know, start writing, mm -hmm. there's a light on, I mean, I, you know, I, I get tired. I mean, you know, gotcha. there the, are the consequences for that. So. Mm. If I stay in the dark for the duration of my insomnia, I'm sort of okay the next day because <laughs> it's been going on. You know, my, my father had insomnia. I had insomnia. Is no, that right? It's, it's no big deal. Okay. Yeah. But um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I scribble. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a big pad, you know, a yellow pad, and uh, yes, and a pen, and, and find it very difficult the next day to actually read my <laughs> <laughs> I was amazed about that. I mean, I, I, I painstakingly tried to, <laughs> to write something. And the only time, you know, you, you feel, I'm not going to remember this. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and so that's how this came. But yeah. This has been going on for years. So. Okay. So a poem. Any one you would like. Yeah. Or any uh, two you would like. Because you, you write a lot of short little pieces, right? Yeah. Um, could be longer. It does make a difference huh? to me. So it could be a longer one. I don't no, care. No, it's, it's not longer. All right. It's just, uh, yeah. This is called Signs of the Times. For a mind full of disquiet, a trembling broadside weed is a Cassandra. And so is the sight of a boarded up public library. The rows of books beyond its windows unopened for years. The sickly old dog on its steps and a man slumped next to him, his mouth working mutely like an actor unable to recall his lines at the end of some tragic farce. Incredible. You know, there. I read a thing where, uh, and we'll have you read another one in a sec if you, if you would, but where was the quote? I had written this down because I thought, wow, um, I read this somewhere that somebody said that your poems uh, were tightly constructed Chinese puzzle boxes. <laughs> Have you well, ever heard that? Did you hear somebody? No, I forget no, who no, said no, that. I like it. I mean, I, you know, it is the, uh, I mean, the, the poem, you know, it has to have a, I mean, this is my view of poetry. Mm. It has a friendly surface, you know. Yes. I say, oh, come here, come here. Yes. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, they come in and they read the poem. And, uh, and, you know, hmm. uh, it's okay. Yes. But then all of a sudden they say, something tells them, you know, they open the book again, let me read this poem again. Yes. And uh, there's something else going on and here. Sure is. And the idea is to, to captivate, capture the imagination of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the reader so that this, they return to it again and again, and other things, you know, come out as a result. I have to tell you, I just recently, a friend of mine had your collective, it was like 
from 19 whatever to whatever yes and i read through them and i was just knocked out because you know in talking about how like you say on the surface they're welcoming and come on in like you say and but the but the more you read them you realize there's like you say a lot more going on and you have this way of of doing that that is so um so um the word I'm looking for Desire. captivating and yeah. so uh, because because you're able to to say so much in such a short little space right. mm-hmm. and I don't know whether that comes from um, you know I, I know that you were you were uh, you were born in Belgrade was it yeah, sure. and you were your family was forced to leave yeah. and so you there was this uh, sort of this business of, of you and your family having to move away and, and move around and this 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 idea of migration or, uh, uh, you know, ha- being pushed out of where you were into, into it, going to another place. Um, and, and that may be informed your writing, I guess, in terms of you're able to, um, you were moving. And so th- now these poems are sort of like, um, capturing these little glimpses of things because it's as, as if you didn't have enough time to, to, to yeah. do them or something. Well, you know, there's definitely, you know, some truth to that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I also, you know, always liked, uh, I mean, this is a, you know, the Greek uh, mm-hmm. in me, I have some, somebody else said, I have some six, I'm six, Greece, Greek, but anyway, you know, the, the, if you look at the, the, the old Greek poetry, but the ancient yes. Greek poetry, but especially the, the, the epigrams, the little short things, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's incredibly clear, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. um, and here they are, you know, two and a half, 25 centuries at least, they are old. Mm-hmm. You pick them up, you read them, you pretty follow them. This is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, so many things have become incomprehensible, yeah. unreadable epics, major national epics. Nobody can look at it, you know. Mm. Uh, and uh, but how this is done? You cannot write a short poem by saying, "I'm going to write a poem of ten lines or yeah. five lines." Right. You don't say, "Okay, this is the first line," mm. then you, because you're going to say to yourself, "You've got to be kidding! <laughs> this is a line of poetry." The way they get written, there's something longer. They are, they, they start as being something totally different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in, in the process of thinking and revising, uh, at, at some point, whatever the original intention was, or you thought you had, you abandon you feel there's something much more interesting here, but I don't know how to resolve it. Yes. And then a day comes, I mean, sometimes you know, this, this takes a few years, you look at it and say, you say, take out the first and the last line. Mm. And you got it. And, uh, and that's how they happen. Yes. So they, they have these, this conciseness is, uh, is a process, uh, and that's something that you know. Uh, Steve Martin, when he was a stand-up comic, yeah. he used to say, really lecturing to some idiot audience. So it's not. He says, uh, many people don't realize how their marriage is a wind she painted the Mona Lisa. Uh, he dipped a paintbrush and he went. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people think pose a bit like this yes. inspiration, <laughs> moonlit night, right? You know, <laughs> no, this is a really uh, you know, it's a slow, painstaking thing. There are many, many things that are like that, sort of half abandoned, just sit mm-hmm. in my notebooks and I return to them, and uh, you know, and that's sometimes they work. Yours, yours are like little jewels. You know, little sparkling little jewels yeah. because they they uh, they they are intriguing too. Yeah. You know, it's it's sort of like looking into a yeah. multifaceted jewel because there's yeah. different ways of coming into it. Uh, it's I'm just amazed at how much of it goes on in such a small 
well, this poem, the poem that I just read, you know, it was my was even longer because yeah. I'm, I'm describing you know, the times we were living yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, this is you know, story of somebody in Europe. Uh, mm. There's somewhere. There's a, I haven't met a person. I mean, I, I, sorry, I met an optimist in the United States in years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone. I mean, I live in you know New Hampshire in the boonies. Uh -huh. Even these, you know, farmers types and you know, I mean, they, they just nobody knows what's going on anymore. Well, really, you know, yeah. All they know is that it's not going to turn out well. You know, oh, yeah, it's that's worse. So, I mean, how do you write a poem that sort of feeling of, of something encroaching on us? Uh, Anyway, I'm sure it was longer. But then uh, this library thing, you know, that gave me a, a kind of an idea. The closed library? The, the closed the library. There's so many closed libraries. Right. In New York, yeah. I was in New York last week, and uh, the summer time in one of the branches, you know, public library yeah. where I used to go when I was young, you know, closed. Mm. And that's, the books that's... are still there, you know, terrible to look at. And then, you know, homeless person. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if you uh, have ever gone back to some of your older poems or and, and decided to revise them after they've been published. You know, only uh, fairly recently. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I did the 50 years, I mean, there were poems I just left behind because I realized that they were, I didn't like them. I mean, I didn't promise with mm -hmm. them. Um, I also knew that revising is very, very difficult. Uh, uh, when I published uh, mid '80s, uh, selected early poems, mm -hmm. uh, George Brazil. Yeah. When I came out, there were I would say about 15 poems that I felt, oh my God, these things have to be revised, and uh, you know, a few things here, a few things there yes. in the poem. So for the second edition, I put these revisions. That was a great surprise when I when it came out. <laughs> I said, um, this is not good. Uh, it's the third edition, you know, you know, when it comes around, yeah. I'll restore the original. Because what I learned is that the awkwardness of, the, of these early versions, that was their charm. Uh, yeah. That they had a kind of, there was like a person we know who right, right, drops right, things. Right, right. <laughs> You know, whatever you <laughs> their elbow. Yes. And uh, there was nothing else. I mean, yeah. if you straighten them out, you know, take out all that, it is, <laughs> there's nothing. But now, um, uh, about you know, a few years ago, four or five years ago, since I have a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, left behind, and some of the money came out in, in literary magazines. I've been, I've been working on them, with, but with the a different idea. Not so much to fix the poems, but to use them to kind of very freely to you know, make major major changes if they, yeah. if, they can, if they work as a poem. And uh, this is going to take me. I mean, I have about about seventy of them, mm -hmm. and you know they're. they're They've been already revised, but I, I, I want to leave them for a few years. To, yeah. We'll just sort of yes. see what. Let them bake a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, you are one of our elder statesmen in poetry. You are in the pantheon of, seriously, you're, you know, among the great poets that we have. Uh, sure, sure, sure. And, I, and I wonder what's, you know, you've won all these awards. You've uh, ex extensively and widely published. Do you ever think about like what's next? Do you have a goal? Is there something you haven't done that you want to do in your career in terms of poetry or you've done it all, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no I, you know, I don't even think about anymore no. about poetry. Po po I just simply, poetry is something I have to do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I know painters who have to get up in the morning and go to the studio. Yes, and yes. Things, you know. Do you write every day? No. No? Okay. Uh, no, I mean I, I, I take a take a peek in my notebooks. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 
I write the long hand that I have you know, different kinds of notebooks where I write right. prose. I write a lot of prose, you know. Do so you? I, okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, for news review books, I've been for twenty years, you know, writing essays. And yes. All sorts of of stuff. course. So, um, but uh, what I will do, um, I will take. I have a file where I have things that I'm working on, and I'll take it out and uh, just go through them because very often, uh, you know, something yeah. tells you the word that you're looking for. Something pops into your head, and you, you make it with it. Yeah. Uh, and then there are periods when I intensely write. Uh, you know, for weeks, sure. every, every day. Uh, but uh, it's something I have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, even if I'm not writing, I, I, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. There's the period of input, and then there's the period of output, I suppose. Yeah. Right? Where you're, yeah. even when you're not, maybe even not even thinking about it, there you're absorbing things that you come across and, yeah. and people that you talk to and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, have you have you done things? You know, there's this whole, you know, these days there's this whole business of, uh, you know, ekphrastic poetry where people are looking at art or paintings and they write a poem about it, or they, uh, you know, the whole idea of a found poetry and they they find something and they put it down or whatever and it's a found poem. Have you dabbled in any of that? Uh, have you ever I done think, a found I think, poem? I think everybody has, but that, that's yeah. that's sort of old stuff. Yeah. What's yeah, well, still a, going on? Yeah. Well, that's that's a. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> sort of, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, it's like a painting, you know, somebody you know, <laughs> taking somebody else's some, painting. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you take a, you know, big, huge white canvas, and then uh, uh, you know, in, in the middle of square, a different shade of white. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's Russian, you know, Russian futurists did this stuff back in yes. you know, 1911, and uh, yeah, I mean. Um, um, not your cup it, of tea. No, I mean I, I've I've written, I've written a poem, a love poem, mm -hmm. in, in that big book. Uh, yeah. I think it's called the Cafe Paradiso. It's a love poem. I, I just used uh, yeah. the menu. Right. Let's, let's listen on the menu. Yeah. I uh, I just you know my you know <laughs> forget the the, the dishes. Right, but right, I mean, right. You know, I remember uh, it. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's uh, it's all. Just as I found it. Mm -hmm. So anything, if it works, yes. you know. But I, it has to be. It's got to be something it, compelling about it. Exactly. It has to be. I mean, you know, we don't think of poetry as being part of you know mm -hmm. entertainment industry, or uh, right. but you got to please the reader. Uh, I mean, ancient poets knew this. I mean, you know, yeah. you, you got to. I mean, I mean, uh, do you have an audience in mind when you write? Do you are you? No, you no? don't. You don't. I okay. mean, but you, you you know you always want somebody to be able to sure you know yes. have something, get something out of this. Do you share your work with friends or family or anybody before you send it? Before you publish it, do you? Well, uh, with friends, many of my good friends uh, have died, mm. uh, and so that that is not the case. Uh, my wife gets to read. Mm -hmm. Uh, my poems and my prose. Uh, she's a very good proofreader mm -hmm. and uh, also knows when I'm faking. <laughs> <laughs> she knows when you're not authentic? <laughs> well, if, yeah, you know, yeah, oh, she, she remembers. She says, You wrote about this. Like, what do you mean? Goes, yeah. And she goes, What about this? Here. <laughs> and you say, oh, God, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Let me kiss your feet. <laughs> no. um, what, do you have a favorite poem of yours, your own? Is you, could, would you be able to say, well, this is the my favorite, or does that change from time to time? No, I think there are poems of mine that I like mm -hmm. more than, I mean, I, but uh, very often what's happening in the poem um, plays a role. Uh, there is a poem called Shelley uh, about the you know mm -hmm. romantic poet, which takes place in New York in the fall of 1959. Uh, I'm, I was I come from Chicago in mm -hmm. 1958 and uh, summer of 1958 and uh, no, it's not fall of the year, it's uh, winter of 1958. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm. 
destitute. I live in a, in a three bag hotel, hmm. uh, you know, crummy jobs. And, uh, and in the used bookstore, I get a, a volume of Sherry's poetry. Yeah. I'm walking around kind of cold and, hmm. and reading Shelley. Yes. And uh, this was a period in my life because nothing interesting happened. Yeah. I, mean, I, I never thought about it at all. And then when I did remember, then I, I remember that I think it was about 1990. Yeah, it was about 1990. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote that poem a lot of years after. I saw myself like a like a character in, the, wow. in somebody else's book. Yeah. I mean, this totally clueless <laughs> <laughs> guy uh, roaming the streets of you know Greenwich Village. Um, this was like you say in the what was it the late fifties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the time to be in the Greenwich Village. There was uh, there was a whole lot going on. Yeah, but I, you know, the, the, there was a very different. There was a lot of what was going on, but there were uh, the, the city, uh, the city, the, the, the village mm -hmm. did not really have the same quality as it did later when the uh, you know was was the. There's the beats, and right? It was the folk music. Yes, stuff. yes. Before then, it was a, it was really a very kind of residential. Yeah. And there were bars. There were old bars. Yeah. There were interesting cafes, Italian right. cafes right, right. where people hung out. And you, uh, so the, yes, there was a literary life, and you know, there were painters. And uh, uh, but aside from that, it was, uh, you know, on weeknights. Uh, you know, off season, mm -hmm. it was empty. Yeah. Who, who in the in 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 your in your career, who has, who who has meant the most to you, or who has influenced you the most? Well, well, I'd to say, yeah. uh, uh, I would say, uh, you know, starting with Whitmer, Whitmer mm -hmm. Dickinson. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. You know, you know, 20th century, you know, right. Stevens, Williams, uh, right. really, very different kinds of poets. Uh, and then, my God, uh, uh, a lot of poets, American poets, uh, including you know, some of my late friends like James State, yes. and, uh, uh, Mark Strand, mm -hmm. others. Uh, uh, but then also, you know, we, we all read everything. Right? Yeah. We read European poetry, we read South American right. poetry, right. so there was just a lot of stuff. Would you read another poem for us? Sure. The infinite. The infinite yawns and keeps yawning. Is it sleepy? Does it miss Pythagoras, the sails on Columbus's three ships? Does the sound of the surf remind it of itself? Does it ever sit over a glass of wine and philosophize? Does it peek into mirrors at night? Does it have a suitcase full of souvenirs stashed away somewhere? Does it like to lie in a hammock with the wind whispering sweet nothings in its ear? Does it enter empty churches and light a single candle on the altar? Does it see us as a couple of fireflies playing hide and seek in a graveyard? Does it find us good to eat? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Simic, thank you. Thank you so much. You've been thank very you. gracious and generous, and we appreciate that I so much. I enjoyed this very much. <laughs>